Welcome to this lecture on leases and suspensive sale agreement. Now, in this section of the work, what we're going to be looking at is we are going to be looking at basically the VAT treatment as well as the income tax treatment of these different types of transactions that taxpayers might get involved in. The VAT, we're not going to go into too much detail because this is studied separately under VAT, but I will give you the necessary recap here to bring you up to speed. Now, you'll see that when we look at these three types of events or transactions, operating leases, finance leases, and suspense of sales, the operating lease and the finance lease are treated the same way for income tax purposes. They both just treat it as a lease. So you treat it, the one person, the owner of the asset, the lessor, gives another taxpayer the ability to use the asset for a lease or a rental payment. So if I am, I've got a business and I have a, a machine, an air conditioning machine, for example, in the factory, a portable one, and I'm leasing it from someone. So I pay them 1,000 rands a month and I can use this machine in my factory. I'm not the owner of it. I can't sell the asset. I can only use it in terms of the agreement. If I don't pay, the owner will come and take it back. An operating lease and a finance lease for income tax purposes are treated in the same way. But they treat it differently for VAT. The finance lease and the suspense of sale, on the other hand, are treated the same for VAT purposes. And they're both treated as an installment credit agreement. So when you just look at this like this, it might seem a little bit confusing at first, but you'll see when we start just looking at the detail, it's actually quite simple, and this should be very helpful to remind you of how to apply it. We're going to start with an operating lease. Now an operating lease, I think, is a very simple concept. Most of us are aware of it. Again, this is my, as the example I used Previously, I'm re renting uh, an asset from someone to use in my business. I pay them 1,000 rands a month to use the asset. If I stop paying them, they come and take the asset. It doesn't belong to me. I can only use it while I'm paying for it. Okay, so let's start off with the VAT implications of this. Now, for VAT implications, this is con uh, called a rental in the VAT Act basically, and the two sections that you need to be aware of, remember we always look at value and timing. The value rule is in section 10.2 and section 10.3, and this is the normal rule, what we would call it. It's, a, um, it's not a special rule. So this is the rule for everybody which says you calculate on the value of the consideration. So in other words, if that thousand rands that I'm paying is X VAT a month, the VAT on that will be a thousand times fifteen percent uh, hundred and fifty rands like that the timing now we our normal timing rule for that says it's the earlier of invoice or payment yeah it's a bit different here it's the earlier of when the payment is due or when the payment is received the reason why it doesn't say invoice or payment is because it's common in these types of transactions to enter into an agreement today where I say you pay, I need to pay you each month on the first a thousand rands and not necessarily to be invoiced separately for it um, or to wait for an invoice. This is basically just to, to tie it to the contract. Okay, what are the income tax implications? Here's the lessor, here's the lessee. So, first thing is, the lessor. The lessor remains the owner of the property. The asset stays the lessor's. So the lessor can claim capital allowances and any other deductions on it. So for example, if the lessor owns a manufacturing machine and it leases that manufacturing machine out, the lessor can still claim section 12c under that. The normal rules apply. The lessee, on the other hand, therefore does not become the owner of the asset and the lessee cannot claim any capital allowances. I say there's one exception here, and that has to do here with leasehold improvements, but I'll talk about it in a second. It's also nothing new for you. Then back to the lessor. 
The lessor will receive every month. I'm paying this thousand rands to the lessor to, le uh, to lease the asset. So the, that amount, that thousand rands a month, is gross income for the lessor. For the lessee, this is important. This is a deduction under section 11a, the general deduction formula. Right, and this amount is what's going to be subject to potentially to a recoupment under section 85. Again, don't worry about recoupment now. A recoupment happens at the end of the lease. That's a completely separate section to study. Right. If you have to pay a lease premium, so you will recall, for example, these uh, situations where you say there's a piece of land and one company enters into an agreement with another company to lease the land from them. They have to pay a lease premium and make a leasehold improvement. That lease premium gets included in the gross income of the lessor and the lessee can claim a section 11A allowance for it. The leasehold improvement will be included in the gross income of the lessor, a, a special inclusion in terms of the gross income definition, same as the lease premium, and it will qualify for section 11H deduction. This will be provided for you in the exam, if you recall. So all of these guys, all of these things I'm saying here are just recaps of things that you've studied before. That's why we're not going into detail. Same over here. Now, the leasehold improvement, again, you will recall, so you enter into a transaction that says you must erect a factory, and the factory must have a, um, a value of 1.5 million rands. But then you go and you actually spend uh, 2 million rands to erect the factory. You can only claim Section 11G on the 1.5 million, you'll recall. But the 2 million minus the 1.5 million, that excess, that, if it's a factory, you can still claim an allowance on. That is why it talks to you about the capital allowance, and that is what that exception referred to. Right. But again, this is just section 11G like you've studied it. And then as I make a comment here, guys, the lessee, you should also consider whether there's a recoupment under section 85. But I'm going to say here, but this only happens at the end of the lease. Don't want you to worry about that now. You study that in a completely separate section. All right, so let's look at an example. So we've got two companies here, A Limited and X Limited, both VAT vendors, both of the 31 December yens. They're not connected persons. A Limited acquired a new manufacturing machine. Manufacturing machine means it qualifies for Section 12C. On the 1st of February of the current year of assessment, for 1,380,000, so that's a VAT of 180,000 included. A Limited immediately entered into a lease agreement with X Limited, whereby A Limited would lease machine F to X Limited at a monthly rental of 34,500 rands, which is 30,000 rands plus VAT of 4,500 rands. The rental payments are due on the 7th of each month, but X Limited always pays on the 1st of each month. X Limited can end the lease at any point after giving two months' notice. Machine F will not become the property of X Limited in terms of the lease agreement. X Limited will use Machine F in a process of manufacture. In terms of the agreement, A Limited maintains full risk of ownership and A Limited will maintain and repair the machine. So the first thing we're going to ask is, is this an installment credit agreement as defined in the VAT Act? Okay, so guys, let's just go through it. Everything in bold here is basically directly from the Act. So this is just to remind you of what an installment credit agreement is in terms of the VAT Act. So it says, an installment credit agreement in as defined in the VAT Act is any agreement whereby any goods consisting of corporeal movable goods or machinery or plant, and that machinery or plant could be movable or immovable. Right, now, just up to there, the important thing that you need to see here is that corporeal movable goods Corporeal also means it's tangible, so it's not intangible assets, and movable means it's not immovable. But now I want you to just see. It says here, machinery or plant can be movable or immovable. That is machinery or plant. And plant and machinery, guys, both machines and those type of things. This does not include buildings. So this excludes, this definition excludes buildings. Just remember that. So in this case, guys, there's a machinery and there's an agreement. So any agreement, tick. And we've got this movable goods. And they are supplied under a lease in this case. The rent consists of a stated or determinable sum of money payable at a stated or future date. Yes, 
Each month, they need to pay 34,500 rands. The sum of this money includes finance charges. Now, does this include finance charges? No. There's nothing in this question that indicates for us that it includes finance charges. This is just a rental payment that is being made. So that's a far as a problem for us. Then they say, the aggregate of the amounts payable under such lease by the lessee to the lessor and any residual value of the lease goods on termination of the lease exceeds the cash value of the supply. Now again, we don't know how long this lease is for. It can be ended at any point in time, so we can't say how much we're going to be paying for it. Right, so that's already again a problem. The lessee is entitled to possession, use or enjoyment of those goods for a period of at least 12 months. Again, there's no period in this case, they, so you can't say that the lessee is entitled to it. Well, I have to tell you that. The lessee accepts the full risk of destruction, or the lessor accepts the full risk of destruction, and the lessee accepts the risk of maintenance and repair. And that, so, understand what this means? It means either the lessee, the person leasing it, takes all the risks. So if it, the machine explodes, they'll, they'll take the risk and they'll have to ref um, pay the lessor. Maintenance, repairs, they have to pay for all of those things. Right? Or... The lessor accepts the full risk of destruction, so if the machine explodes, the lessor carries the loss and the insurance costs for it, but the lessee accepts the risk of maintenance and repair, so they have to maintain it. In this case, it's not the case because the lessee only pays rental. So this is not an installment credit agreement. Right, so guys, that's just a little bit of provision for you, and that's why it comes to that. Right, so now, next to the required B for the lessor, what are the VAT implications? for A limited. Now, if this is not an installment credit agreement, this is a rental agreement, and these are the VAT implications. The value is the amount that is charged, so that's that 34,500 rands, right? So that's the VAT amount of 4,500 rands. That's the amount, the value, and the timing is when it's due or received the earlier of the two. They tell you it's due on the 7th, but they will always pay on the 1st. Now, why that I'm also starting here, the lessor is the one that gets the output tax. Remember guys, we always study VAT from the output tax side first. If there is output tax, then the, the other taxpayer can claim the input tax. Right, so guys, those are the discussions there. And then, what is the taxable income for A-Limited for the current year of assessment? Now, what are the, the implications here for the lessor? The lessor is the owner, so the lessor can claim capital allowances. So that's the first thing. So I want you to see. Here we go. The capital allowances claimed on the machine. And then the rental income, that was for 11 months, because it was from February, is included in gross income. There we go. Then we ask for the lessee. So this is the input side. Discuss the VAT implications. So the same rules apply for the value and the timing. Right? And what are the income tax implications? They can claim that rental paid. See the amount excluding VAT guys? Remember that if you're a VAT vendor? There we go. So very, very simple guys and operating lease.